Thank you, Lord. Everybody close your eyes just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Every eye closed. I want you just to let everything that's a problem or a worry just fade away right now. You know, we've got busy lives. Amen. Today isn't over. But how many can just signal with a lifted hand, say, I have already thought about what I've got to get done tomorrow. <laughs> It is so easy for us to be preoccupied with what's next, what's going to happen, what am I going to do, what's going to occur, how is this going to resolve, that we miss what is right now. Let his presence, let his spirit be right now. Just forget about everything else. Because guess what? If, if he decided to blow that trumpet right now, does any of that stuff that you had planned to do, would it matter anymore? So for this moment, just keep your eyes closed and just give him your undivided attention. Take a deep breath. Just feel his presence. You don't have to say the words, but just from your heart, just tell him how much you love him. He has brought us through so much I feel like I'm supposed to say that he is the author and the finisher of our faith there are things we are striving for things we have run from things we have hid from things that we have tried to escape, things we have tried to delay in our life. And sometimes when we do that, we find ourselves in a place of guilt because we're thinking about what we missed, what opportunities have passed, what could have been done, what could be different. And instead of thinking about right now and what that we can do, what we can do right now, we're thinking about what wasn't, what could have been. And that just sets us up for later on to again be in the same position saying, what have I missed? What could have been? If you took a breath a minute ago, God is not finished with you. And everything that you have went through, even the things that you think are failures, they have prepared you 
for what God has planned for you. Can you just tell him thank you for that? Thank you, Lord. Has God ever just surprised you and blessed you and done something through you in such a way that you thought, man, I wish I could take the revelation that I have right now after seeing the outcome, seeing the blessing, and I wish I could go back to that time where I was lacking faith and I wish I could give him thanks in that moment. Because I'm going to tell you, that thanks, when everything looks like it's hopeless, that thanks in that time means so much. So go ahead and right now, no matter what it is, and I know everybody has something on their mind, something that the enemy's maybe kept you preoccupied with, or maybe even the enemy, maybe it's just your own self worrying about how is it going to come to pass, how is it going to happen. Go ahead and thank him right now in faith, believing that it's going to work out. Can you get that revelation? Whatever it is, the outcome, I want you just to imagine that it's happened. Imagine that it's done. Imagine you see the final result, the finished work. Imagine it being in order. Now thank him. Now say this, according to thy will, Lord, let it be done. Hallelujah. You can open your eyes. You know, he just needs us to be willing. Amen? <clears throat> and that makes it really easy, doesn't it? That all I have to be is willing. Because if I have to do something else, if I have to overcome, if it has to be by, by, by my ability alone, I'm going to be a nervous wreck. You ever heard um, people say, oh, if you wait till you're ready to have children, you'll never have them? <laughs> that is the truth. If we did that, Tyler wouldn't be here. And he's 12. Well, if you had to wait until you felt like you were ready for God to do something in your life or to begin to work through you, it would be that much more difficult. Amen? But God has a plan, and what's so wonderful is he's going to make sure everything happens. You know, he didn't wait until a bridge was constructed across the Red Sea. Well, I can't take the children of Israel out yet because that bridge hadn't been built yet. No, he went ahead and took them out and he said, look, I'll make a way. I'll breathe and I'll part. I will stop anybody that tries to stop you. Why? Not because of our own desire, but because he's going to have his will. Isn't that wonderful? How many of you have ever felt discouraged or defeated because of another person? People can be the worst. <laughs> Amen. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. But no matter what they say, everybody say they. It doesn't matter. It matters what God says. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Did anybody need that? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He is such a wonderful God. I've got this message ready. <clears throat> but I just feel his presence so heavy. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it is hard to preach when you feel this kind of presence. It's just a calmness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I never want to rush him. I praise you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Goodness. I don't know, something's just stirring in my spirit right now. Can y'all just lift your hands for a moment? Let's just praise him. I I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like we're just supposed to praise for a moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Lord, we glorify you. We honor you. We praise you. God, we don't have any program. We just we are just here to worship you. We love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You are king. You are king. You are king. God, touch us tonight. Sweep through this place and touch your people. Touch us, Lord. Oh, we lift you up. We magnify you, God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Lord, not our will, but yours be done. Ho Torah Mashadai. Karadaboso Torah Rada Mashandari. You are wonderful. You are counselor. Hallelujah.
peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever. In fathomless billows of love. Can we sing that to him right now? Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Raise your hands. Coming down. Sweep over my spirit. Fathomless billows. Oh, yes. Peace, peace. Wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever. Oh, yes, God. Billows. Sing it again and just let the peace of God come into your situation, come into your life. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever. Billows of love. God, I just pray and I just speak peace over the storms in your people's life. I speak peace. I speak peace. I want you to begin to say that whatever it is that you may have going on, whatever storm may be going on in your life, even if it doesn't seem like a downpour, but you sense something that could be, I want you to go ahead and speak peace over it right now because you're an ambassador, (laughs) an ambassador for Christ, and he's given you the authority. So I want you to go ahead and begin to speak it right now. Say, I speak peace. Think about that situation right now. Think about that that event, think about something, whatever it is that may be worrying you or troubling you, I want you to say, peace be still. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I feel like I can go on now. I definitely never want to lose <clears throat> lose sight of what God wants, amen? You know, uh, it can be so easy to get into a routine of stuff, can it? <clears throat> I, I, I cannot, since I've been here, I cannot think of a time where we just were in a routine. It's what I love about, about this church. Uh, I mean... Yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, we have songs and uh, a special, but there is always something. It's those just, uh, those small interruptions by God in our service that are so special. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do uh, some quick review on this. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight, but I, 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 I want to pick back up where we were last week. We were... Um, 
we're going back over the uh, concept of the, the kingdom. And uh, again, this message is um, called Thy Kingdom Come. And we're on part two. And um, <clears throat> just to review from last week, how many enjoyed last week? Amen. What did man lose? Dominion. He lost a government. Amen. How many of you are going to be going to vote here soon? You vote because you have a desire for good government. Amen. Um, I, I, uh, I don't ever put too much hope in any politician. I don't care if they're red or they're blue, conservative, libertarian, um, a liberal, uh, populist. I, I don't care what uh, they are. They are still man. And unfortunately, it seems like no matter who is in what office, at some point money gets involved, greed gets involved, agendas get involved, and it's it just, you never really see the fruition of who they really were when they were wanting to be elected, amen? But we still vote and we still try, why? Because we want good government, amen? And that is a desire that we will uh, never get rid of. And the reason why is because it's something that we lost. And it's in you and you don't, a lot of people don't even realize that it's, it's a desire. We fill our life with all kinds of things trying to uh, get some resemblance back of what we desire in us. We, it's funny because even the atheist they're desiring the kingdom and they don't even know it. They may have uh, different ideologies of what they think will make them happy. Unfortunately, most of those things will fail them. There are many people in different religions. I mean, we've got thousands of religions. All of them are trying to recreate something that is empty inside of them, something that can replace what they have lost. Amen? Um, I talked um, about a, uh, a movement that's happening out west because this guy who was an atheist, he had went to a church and, uh, during a Christmas program and he loved what he felt. Hearing the Christmas carols, seeing the fellowship of the people. Uh, and so they have these, they're not called mega churches, but they're, they, you know, in a sense, that's what they have said, that they're like mega churches for, for atheists because they want to have that fellowship. They want to have uh, songs and, and, and this brotherly love. But, you know, you can have a building, you can have people, you can have songs, you can have clapping, but without the presence of the Lord, you're missing it, amen? Imagine you wanted to make a broccoli casserole, but you don't have no broccoli. You want to make a pumpkin pie. You don't have any pumpkin. You want to make a banana pudding. You have no bananas and no wafers. You're going to be missing it. And you're going to say, why does this not taste the same as what I tasted there? You're missing the main ingredient, amen? Many religions are trying to replace what has been lost and they're wondering why there's such division, why they keep splitting and creating other religions. What is it that's causing the problem? Well, if you don't have the presence of God, the leading, the spirit of God, 
You can try everything you can think of. You can go to other churches and see what they're doing and try to put, uh, put it in place at your place, but you have to have the Spirit of the Lord. Um, so man lost a kingdom. Now, does God change? No, he doesn't change. Let me give you a couple of verses here to review. Psalm 115, 15 through 16. I'm going to do my very, very best, even if I have to cut this short to, to get you out of here at 730. Y'all were such a blessing last week to, um, to, to stay till 8. I, I don't plan on doing that, but, you know, as the Lord leads. And, and after it was over, y'all, y'all hung around. So y'all must have liked what you heard. You know, that's a funny thing. I've had messages before where I get finished and me and Roy had talked about this before where uh, you finish and then the people just scatter and it's empty in a second. And you're thinking, man, that was a rough one. <laughs> but then you have those ones where they just stay and hang around and you know that there's something different about it. Amen? <clears throat> so when everything's over, don't just run out the door. <laughs> 115, Psalm 115, 15 through 16. <clears throat> May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. Everybody stomp your feet on the ground. That's earth. Guess who gave that to you? God. I think we have a duty to Take care of it, amen. Uh, Isaiah 14, 24. I'm going to come back to this one in just a second. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be. And as I have purposed, so it will stand. That lets me know he doesn't change, amen. I read this to you last week, and I'm going to read it again just to get us right back on track where we were. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Look at that. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And I told you last week, zeal means great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective. God is excited about heaven on earth. Amen? Our desire to go to heaven is really in its most purest form, really it's our desire to see the way that it's supposed to be. Now, we have the idea, uh, or at least I did when I was a kid, that when I got there, I was staying there. But we see all through the Bible that the earth shall abide forever. The meek shall inherit the earth. We see uh, us coming back on white horses, the kingdom of heaven on earth, the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God. Uh, and, and a kingdom was given to the saints of the Most High and they shall reign forever and ever. You see it all through the Bible. I think there's like 120 scriptures that basically say that the earth shall be here forever. Why is that? Because God created it in the beginning and he said this is good. The only reason we want to leave it is because it's not in the state that God said this is good. It's in a state that's a mess. And so our desire to go to heaven is really in a desire to see things the way they're supposed to be. And it can be hard for us to imagine or for us to fathom that this earth looking just like heaven. But it's going to happen. He's going to have to burn this sucker with a fervent heat to get it the way it looks before. Amen. He, he had to, I mean, he even told us, said, look, this thing's so messed up, I can't leave one rock upon another. It's so bad. But 
but he still has a plan. Amen? God is so, has such a zeal to see things the way he designed for them to be that it says he'll make a new heaven and a new earth. Now, if you study this, and I'm not going to get into it right now, it, it, it's talking about a renewed heaven, a renewed earth. That's why uh, in the scriptures it even talks about how the heavens will be basically on fire. Not the third heaven where God is. Everything's going to be restructured. Amen. I want to see the new Jerusalem when it begins to descend. Amen. There are certain things in the Bible when I think about it gives me chill bumps. One of them is when uh, it says he destroys them with the brightness of his coming. To see a light so bright. Another one is to see the armies of the Lord and the saints of the Most High riding in on white horses. That just, that picture in my mind is amazing. If it were possible for us to lose our voice then, I think we would lose it. I don't know, the Bible says there's going to be a pause, a, 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 a silence for about 30 minutes. It would have to take the Lord to shut us up for 30 minutes. Because of the excitement and the enthusiasm that we will have. Amen. One of the other things that I want to see and then I think about is to see Satan himself to finally put a, 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 a literal being I can see and I look at him knowing that that was the cause of all our problems, that was the cause that uh, attacked all of our families, that caused uh, division. Think of everything that has ever happened bad in your life. Every relationship that division occurred in, every friendship that was broken up, to see him and say, there he is. And him coming down, in order to bow his knee to the Lord. I don't know what kind of sound I will make in that moment, but I imagine it would be something like, <laughs> I mean, there is going to be a roar, amen? When he begins to go down on a knee, I mean, I'm gonna be, oh, I want to zoom in on it and see it, amen? It's going to happen. We as Christians need to be speaking those things now because we have the authority to do it. Remind him, say, look, you, you're, you're temporary right now. You're trying to make whatever I'm facing seem like a big problem, but I know your end. You are going to bow your knee to the Lord of Lords. I love to remind him of things in the word because he knows the word. Amen. <clears throat> the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> let me go back to this scripture, Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord Almighty has sworn, surely as I have planned, so it will be. Planned is past tense. It means it was already established. Amen. Amen. Um, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. So that means, look, I don't decide something and then somebody can mess up my plan. Even your life, you think, you know, I've messed up what God has for me and I've, 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 I've went a different route. Listen, you cannot get God to ever change your purpose. The way he executes it in your life may be different than 
It would have been if you had turned to him a long time ago or if you began to follow him a long time ago. But your purpose will never change. Just like your father's in heaven, he has a purpose. And it's going to come to pass. What's good is if we go ahead and line up with him, figure out what it is that he wants, and that makes it real easy. You know, I used to get a lot of whippings when I was a kid. And the reason why is because most of the time I had a different plan of what I wanted to do. I realized after a while that the quicker that I lined up with what my grandparents or my parents had planned to do, the, the easier it was for me and the less pain my butt felt. Amen? Tyler sometimes gets epiphanies of this because he'll go through a day, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and he'll be helping us. He did this yesterday. And, I, I, and it's, it, it gets my attention because, and I tell him, I say, you are just doing so good today. What do you want? <laughs> and then I tell him, I say, son, if you would do like this all the time, you can't even imagine all the things you would have in your life. God could say that very same thing to us. If you would just do what I want you to do, you can't even imagine the things that I would pour into your lives. Amen? So God doesn't change. Let's, I want to real quick talk about how God doesn't change. Um, and I'm going to show you, uh, in, in the beginning, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve decided to declare independence. So they just, basically they were saying, we don't need the government of God anymore. Big mistake. Amen? I, I, I told you last week, man's uh, first act of governing himself was man killing his own brother. And nothing has changed very much since. It's only gotten worse. Amen? Uh, Noah comes along and God looks at the earth and he's like, you know what? Even their thoughts are nothing but wickedness. I'm going to have to wash them away. And he saved eight. Abraham, his three sons, and all four of their wives. Oh, Abraham. Yeah, Abraham wasn't on the boat yet. Noah, sorry. Thank you for that. Noah, Noah's sons, and all of their wives. I'm glad you said that. Somebody would have been watching and they would have had Abraham on the boat during the flood. Um, So... He had a government, he had a kingdom in place. Man declared independence and so he washes away everything except for Noah and basically he's deciding at this point to start with a people. Why did he start with them? Well, because they were the ones that were righteous. It says that Noah, not Abraham uh, at this time, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now, Abraham comes along, and God is going to start a nation, but he starts with people. We see in Genesis 12, 2, him telling Abraham, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. You've got to realize that all of this stuff that you see in the Old Testament, every bit of it, if you understand the purpose of God, and that his purpose And what's in his mind was what was in his mind in the very beginning. It will help you to understand the Bible so clearly. Because it's not a new thing that God is doing at this point. He still hasn't changed at this point. He's still going to have his kingdom in the earth. Allowing man to manage it, to govern it under the headship of God. He still had that in his mind. But now he's having to 
help them work through all their sin and to get the kingdom back in the earth, to get dominion back to man because that's the way it was in the beginning. Amen? The good thing is when the literal kingdom, I'm not, I'm not talking about the kingdom we're talking about now, but I'm talking about when it, everything is finished, the finished work, New Jerusalem's come down, new heaven and new earth. The good thing is, is everybody on earth will have already been tested. We will know wickedness. We will know what evil was at one time. But now instead of uh, deciding to, like Adam did, to, to, uh, to, to know evil and good, we will have it taken away from us. Man's curiosity was rough. I believe that there, you know, I have looked through the Bible many times and I've thought about this. I believe everybody, whether terrestrial or celestial, is tested at least once. Because you see it at the beginning of creation. All the angels were tested, weren't they? A third of them went with the enemy, didn't they? Satan was tested. He had a thought arise in his head and he thought, man, I'm better than God. I could be higher than God. He exalted himself. Adam and Eve were in the garden. What happened? There was a test. You don't have to worry about more angels falling. You don't have to worry about when everything gets the way it's supposed to be about there being another falling away. Why? Because everybody at that time will have been tested. Let me prove it to you even a little bit more. Right now, are we being tested? Yes. If you have not been tested, please see me after service because we would, you could write a book and help millions of people. Billions, excuse me. When you leave this earth, you have already been tested. When the millennial kingdom happens, there are going to be people that are in the earth that survived during the tribulation time that did not take the mark of the beast that will still be alive because they'll have to be in order to repopulate the earth for a thousand years. There's going to be people during that millennial kingdom that are going to be born on the other side, on the other side of the tribulation period. Imagine reading history books about all of that that had already taken place. But guess what? The enemy will be locked away for a thousand years. So what's not going to occur? Testing. But there will be testing. We know when he's let loose, he goes to the four corners of the earth. Why? Because there has to be a test. Some of them are going to choose to go against that great city. Some of them are going to say, you crazy. Amen. Think about it. Have you ever thought about that? There is not going to be anything on the other side of Revelation that has not been tested. Right now, everything that you may be going through, you're in a testing period. Go ahead and make up your mind to serve the Lord. Amen? And I will make of thee a, a, a great nation, and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Then you have Moses who comes along. Uh, God wanted to deal with all the people, but you see in the uh, books of Moses where the people were afraid. Moses would bring them before the Lord, and then there would be thunderings and lightnings, and what would they do? They would run back to their tents, afraid. Uh, at one point they, uh, in Exodus 19, you see the Spirit of God poured out upon the people that were going to help them. And look at this, 19, 5 through 6. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, 
You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Uh, I meant to get in Numbers eleven twenty nine first. But Moses replied, are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. They were filling the spirit of God. Guess what Adam had when he was in the garden? The spirit of God. That's what the prophets longed to see, the spirit of God back inside man. Amen. Let me go back to this one, Exodus 19, 5 through 6. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. How many of you know that we have been grafted in? We are a part of a holy nation. When? Not later. Now. Amen. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of heaven now. Not when I die and go there now. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Samuel. Uh, we see Samuel. Um, Samuel gets mad because God is still after what he desired. God's been after it since the very beginning. And you see Samuel, he's trying to be the voice and uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the mediator between the people and God. God wanted to be their king, but the people decided they wanted something else. 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 7. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Everybody say right now, Lord, reign over me. We need him. Amen. Uh, I'm going I'm to skip ahead real quick. John 1, 4 through 13. In him was life. Now, y'all remember what Isaiah 9, 6 through 7 said, right? For unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end, right? In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7, the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, just like in the beginning. Amen? Even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, you've got to get the revelation that the, 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 the second birth, when you are reborn, you are born of God now. Amen. I'll get it myself if I have to. You are not what the enemy would have you to think that you are. Just a random roll of the dice that you were created. Look, you come through flesh, but you're really spirit. Amen. I gotta hurry up. Look at this, First Peter two nine. But ye are a chosen generation, man. I, I I don't have time to stay on that. But you know, in a kingdom, you don't choose. In, in a democracy, we're getting ready to vote. Why? Because we're going to make a choice. You don't do that in a kingdom. The king chooses you. Amen. 
Doesn't it say that in the word? I have chosen you. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <laughs> Amen. Romans 8, 18 through 23. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation, oh, I love this. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Look, when you go out here and you see a plant, that plant knows what Adam used to look like. You see a bird, that bird knows what Adam used to look like. What was Adam? Adam was the original design of God, the way man was supposed to be, the position he was supposed to be in, the dominion that he was supposed to have in the earth. Birds still fly. They know what their job is. Flowers still grow in the field. They know what their job is. The lion in the real kingdom of God, when it's in place, the lion and the lamb are supposed to be able to lay down together. The only reason why one eats the other is because another government is in place. Look, the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. How can the sons of God be revealed? I just read it to you. If you believe on him. Every element, every single thing that God has created has an understanding of the natural order of things. When the king of glory showed up, and began to walk on the water. The water knew its place. It had an eager expectation. Can y'all understand? Is this too deep? It had an eager expectation uh, for the sons of God to be revealed. What man used to be. When things line up to God's word. Us, when we line up to God's word, everything that is a problem in your life will begin to be fixed. You are supposed to have dominion over your problems. Daniel had a, an understanding of this concept. Why? Because he could be put down into a pit with hungry lions, but he understood the dominion that he was supposed to have. And he laid upon them as a pillow. I want that revelation. How many of you have problems that you want to speak to? The storm clouds, when they heard the voice of authority saying, peace, be still, they had to obey. The Bible says, if I cast out a devil, you know the kingdom of God has come upon them. Look, if you are in the kingdom of God, you are under his jurisdiction all the time. I've said this before, but I know some of you have never heard it, so I'm going to tell you again. Um, the Bible says, uh, whenever he was talking to Peter, but he was really speaking to everyone, it said, upon this rock, I will build my church. You're the church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
that's uh, that word hell there. Uh, all three words, Hades, Sheol, and Gehenna, all translate into hell, even though they're three different things. That word there was Hades. It was talking about the grave. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the grave shall not prevail against it. That means if you are in the kingdom of God, even when you die, you are still under the jurisdiction of heaven. You are not alone even then. You may leave your body for a little while, but your spirit is still under the jurisdiction of heaven. That's why the Bible says, don't worry about those people that have power over your body. Worry about the one who has power over the body and the spirit. Why? Because people on this earth can only affect your body. They only have jurisdiction over your body. All those problems, they're only in effect on your body. But your spirit belongs to the Lord. Let me give you this scripture and then so we can go. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. I'm going to move ahead. Um, this uh, Romans 8, 18 through 23 let me read it anyways. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Everybody say, my soul and my spirit has been redeemed. He's going to give you a glorified body one day though. So even your body, if you're one of his, even they only have power over it for a little bit of time. Amen? Oh, I love it because whenever those two witnesses are gonna be at the wailing wall and they're gonna be preaching, they're gonna wanna kill them, but they will not die until that appointed time. When it comes time, they will die and they will rejoice. They are so ignorant and so stupid. They don't have power over their spirit. That jurisdiction belongs to heaven. They will rejoice. Why? Because of the power they have over their body. And they'll feel like they have power because they still see the body. But even then, after three and a half days, the Lord, the owner... There's going to happen, something is going to happen and they're going to see, oh my goodness, those bodies come back to life and go up and they'll realize, oh my goodness, we really don't have anything because the Lord will even come and redeem the bodies. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Pat yourself, say, this is going to change. It's corruptible right now, but it will be incorruptible, amen? Let me give you these last few and then we'll go. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. Who, uh, for, moreover, whom he did predestinate. Look, uh, we're not Presbyterian. We don't believe in predestination that you're going to heaven or hell when you're born. But it is predestined that you're supposed to be a son of the living God. You're supposed to walk in dominion and power. The thing is, is he gave us authority to choose whether we want to do it or not. Amen. So it's already decided for you that you're going to win where your authority comes in is you have to choose with your own free will to follow him, amen? So whom he did predestinate them, he also called. You are called, amen? 
whom he called, them he also justified. He says, all right, I'm calling you and it's already set up for you to be justified because my blood, my son was slain before the foundation of the world to justify you if you will just hinder, come to the call. Listen, heed my voice and come to me. I will justify you. That means it'll make, he'll make it right. All those old things, that old man, he will say, you know what, that's no more, you're new. You're covered. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. That word glorified is the word doxa, which again means the full weight, the heavy weight, the fully realized potential. He's saying, look, if I, I've already predestined you, you have to decide. I've already called you, you have to follow. If I've already called you, guess what? I've already made arrangements for you to be made right and to be made righteous, to be justified. And if you're justified, guess what? I'm not gonna finish there. I'm gonna glorify you. I'm gonna bring you into the full potential. Uh, because Why? Because creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. To see, I, I want to be what God designed for me to be, amen? Right now, do you know what we are? We are a consequence of the fall. But we're changing from glory to glory, amen? Uh, I won't go any further. I'm going to leave it right there at this. I've already went over 10 minutes. I tell you, time flies, amen? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I'm going to give him this one more. Matthew 5, 33. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know what this means. Blessed is the person that realizes that they are spiritually bankrupt. Why? Because when you realize that you are spiritually bankrupt, you can begin to seek for answers. You know, sometimes people have to lose everything to begin to learn how to manage something correctly. Sometimes people have to get in a lots, of, lots of debt, lose everything they have in order to say, you know what? I should hold on to this money and figure out how to manage it properly. Amen? When we realize that we're spiritually bankrupt, you begin to eagerly seek, God, I've made a mess of my life and I need you. I need you to fix it. When you realize you have nothing, it's so much easier to receive the kingdom of God why? Because, hey, you were governing your own life and it's failed. Amen? Y'all stand with me. We want to thank you guys for watching us. If you don't know the Lord, I pray that you would pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I know what you did. I read in the Word or I've heard in the Bible that you shed your blood on the cross of Calvary and I accept what you did. I ask you to come into my life and be Lord of my life because from this day forward, I acknowledge that you are the Lord, Jesus Christ. Come into my heart and change my life. If you prayed that prayer, I pray that, pray that you would go to lmcigreenville.org, click contact at the top and let us know. God bless you. Ronnie, will you get a song ready?